All right, so today we're going to be talking about slope fields. We're also going to just integrate this because I didn't show how to do that in the last video. So we're going to quickly integrate this, but then we're going to sketch the slope fields. All right, let's start off with what do we do when you have a differential equation? Generally, you can integrate it. If you can, if you see there's only one variable on the right side, you know you can just separate these variables. So we're going to get all of the things with a y on the left side and all of the things with an x on the right side. So we're going to multiply both sides by dy dx. So you're going to have 3x minus 2 times dy dx, or I'm sorry, dx. So now you have dy is equal to this, and now you can integrate both sides. So I will integrate that and integrate that. And this is, this left side confuses you. This is basically one dy. And the integral of 1 with respect to a variable is just that variable. So now we have a y, and now we can use our power rule for the x side. So we can add 1 to the x on it. So this is x to the first, and so we're going to add 1, and then we're going to divide by that x on it, which is 2. So go that's going to be y is equal to... three halves over two x squared and then the two you it's like two times x to the zero power and so zero to the first or x to the first which is just x two x and then you need a plus c. Because every good integral, every good indefinite integral deserves a plus c. But now we're going to sketch the slope fields. And so this integration, while it could be important just to kind of show the original function, is not important for sketching the slope fields. Because what the slope field is, is just showing the slopes at every given point. And what we're going to do is we're going to do each of these points on the coordinate plane. And I'm probably only going to do up to like two. But here's how we're going to do that. We're going to look at this and see this only depends on x so we're going to have x and we're going to have dy dx dy dx and so we're going to make a little table here and because this only depends on x that the y value whatever the slope field is if it if if this is our slope here, then it's going to all have the same slope because it does not depend on y. And we're going to draw little lines to indicate the slope. So we're going to start at negative 2, because that's where I said I was going to start. So we're going to start at negative 2, and then we're going to go to negative 1, 0. We're going to go to not negative 1, we're going to go to positive 1. And then we're going to go to 2. And now we're going to go back and substitute all of these back into our original equation. So that is negative 6. So negative 2 times 3 is negative 6 minus 2 is negative 8. So your negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5. This is just 0 minus 2, which is negative 2. 
be 3 minus 2 is 1, and 6 minus 2 is 4. So now we have our slopes. And so now we get to sketch it. So we're going to look at the negative 2 column, and that's a negative 8, so that's a pretty steep slope. So we're going to start here, and I guess I could do the, the y values because they're all going to be the same. So let's do it, draw a relatively steep line here. And they all should have the exact same slope. And now we can move over to negative 1, and it has a slightly less steep slope. So we're going to just do uh, like that. And then for a 0, it has a negative 2 slope. So And if you really wanted, you could pull out like a ruler or something to make this exact. But it shouldn't have to be extremely exact. At 1, the slope is actually a positive 1. And here it is 4. So... These probably need to be a bit steeper, but you get the point. Alright, here's one more with both respect to y and x. So let's try and figure this one out. So first we notice that the dy dx is not isolated, and we are trying to plot dy dx, so we need to solve for dy dx. So we're going to move this y dy dx to the other side. So we're going to have 2x is equal to y dy dx. And then we could divide both sides by y. So 2x over y is equal to dy dx. dy dx. So now we can get our little table, our x, y, and dy dx, y, dx. That looks like a t, but I think the point is made clear. So x. Let's just start, I guess, in the top left corner here, and just work our way down. So let's say x is equal to negative 2, and y is equal to 2. So if that's the case, that's negative 4 divided by 2, it's positive, it's negative 2. And so we're probably going to graph that right off the bat because we know where it is. So it's going to be a relatively normal line, I guess. So it's going to be about like that. And then we're just going to go down here to x is equal to negative 1. Let's actually do keep that and do y is equal to 1 and so that's negative 4 so at negative 2 1 So negative 2, 1 up. So that is right here, negative 2, 1 up. The slope is going to be 
negative 4. So it's going to be even steeper. And we're also going to notice that any time when y is equal to 0, that it's going to have an undefined slope. And so I'm going to just color that in blue. So that's going to look like a vertical line when y is equal to 0. And so that's probably where you want to start, actually, is where something is either undefined or 0. So let's look at when this will be 0. That'll be whenever x is 0. So whenever x is 0, this line will just be horizontal. Except for the origin, and that's 0 over 0. So we're just not even going to put anything there. So I don't make any calculus professors hate me. So I'm just going to go out to 2. And so now we're going to go over to x is equal to... I'm just going to continue this process for the entire grid. This is a very poor sketch, but I think the idea is there. So let's also just solve this differential equation for the general form. So we have almost ready with this equation here to be able to just integrate both sides. So instead, we're going to move this dx over. So we have 2x dx by multiplying both sides by dx. I'm just treating the dy and the dx as like they're just normal variables. So that should be good. And then we can integrate both sides. Take the indefinite integral. I'm just going to write it over here. So I don't have to rewrite anything. So the power rule, add 1 to the exponent. So that's x to the first plus 1 over that, which is 2. And so these twos actually cancel out. And so we have a x squared. And then we're going to have our plus c. Just have it on the x side. And then we're going to do the same thing with the y. We're going to look at this as y to the first. Add 1 to the exponent because of the power rule. And divide, and divide by that exponent. So that's y squared over 2. y squared over 2. Now this isn't an, an, an equation for y yet. So we're going to multiply both sides by 2. And here's where a couple of students get tricked up. So we're going to have 2x. And then we're going to multiply 2 here. But that's still a constant term. If it's 0.5, it's now 1. If that plus c was 7, it's now 14. But again, it's just still some constant, so we're just going to keep calling it c. And so now we have y squared. And then we're going to take the plus and minus square root of this, because when you take the square root, you got to think about the plus and minus. So plus minus, and then we're going to square root, plus minus plus minus. And so on the y side, I'm going to flip it so it makes it a bit more readable. But on the y side, we will have y is going to be equal to the plus or minus square root of 2x squared plus c. And then we can box our answer. That is not a box. Boom.